<laughs> you must come with me. <laughs> come with me if you want to live. <laughs> <laughs> Moon Prism Power Make Up. Hello <laughs> and <laughs> welcome everyone to Ochatu, the fortnightly podcast where we drink tea and review manga. I am Jade. I am Oliver. And I'm Suelen. Every two weeks we pick a manga that one of us has recommended and we read up to a certain chapter and discuss the manga with a megaton of spoilers. This week we are reading Be Shoujo Senshi Sailor Moon otherwise known as Pretty Soldier slash Guardian, Sailor Moon, by Naoko Takeuchi, up to chapter 13. This is recommended by me. We'd also like to give a shout out to Sailor Logical, who, <laughs> has, <laughs> who is a uh, uh, regular listener. Thank you. We love you. And we think you're amazing. Indeed. So, uh, <laughs> but before diving in, we must know the answer to the most important question. What is everyone drinking in their mug? What have you got, Jade? I have um, a peppermint infusion from Aldi. It's very nice. Mm. Mm. How about you, Sulan? I'm, uh, I'm drinking blueberry pancake. Oh. Mm. That sounds great. Yeah. yeah. It smells does, delicious. Does it actually taste like pancakes and blueberries? It definitely tastes uh, fruity. Mm. Mm. Yeah. But, but the smell is, is, is amazing. It smells like a dream. Really? So no pancake smell? Definitely pancake smell. Blue, okay. Blueberry pancake smell. Yeah, it's like, you know, those blueberry muffins you get and you just have that smell. Like that. Oh, yeah. yeah, I can imagine that. Mm -hmm. What about you, Ollie? I've got um, good karma spe spelt K-A-L-M-E-R. Uh, from Bird and Blend. It's really nice, but I'd also like to give out a shout out to the cola bottle one they did this Christmas. I thought it would be awful. It was incredible. It was like a kind of sweet cherry tea. Oh, mm. delicious. This one's great too. This is this one's got um, cocoa in, which is quite nice, actually. Mm. Very common. For some reason, uh, when my uh, tea arrives, it gave me two honey bee beautiful. Mm. Oh. It doesn't have um, good karma, so I have no idea. I mean, honeybee beautiful. I literally would be lovely, don't lovely, have good karma. <laughs> <laughs> You've been cursed. Yeah. Was it? Was it? What? What does it taste like? Cocoa, kind of. It's nice. Um, it's hard to describe because I'm crap at description. So if you'll give me just a few seconds. Um, <clears throat> The perfect caffeine-free cover to accompany your tea and biscuit breather, packed full of calming herbs like turmeric and ashwagandha, but tastes like a chocolate ginger nut biscuit. It actually is quite like a chocolate ginger nut biscuit. So it tastes like ginger and cocoa, kind of. It's good. I'm missing it out. Next Christmas, you'll get it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sounded like a threat, but... <laughs> um, Cool. So we are reading Sailor Moon by Naoko Takeuchi. This was first published in 1991. It's a shoujo manga which has been widely read and loved around the world because of its portrayals of femininity, strength, queer relationships and world building. So Sailor Moon is essentially a series centered around a group of magical girls with um, Tsukino Usagi as their leader and their main goal is to find the silver crystal and protect the princess of the moon kingdom and they come across a lot of obstacles on the way. So um, I think the mangaka wrote Sailor Moon when she was around, like, in her early 20s, I want to say, 24. I was reading the notes, actually, and I think she said she originally came up with the draft when she was, like, 14 and then had to kind of just rip it up. She was like, no, it's, I can't do this. And then um, kind of did it again when she was 24 and uh -huh. everybody loved it. Okay, yeah, because I read that she um, earned a chemistry degree. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then she went into the manga industry at 19 years old. That's pretty so, intense. 
Yeah. Mm. What were your first impressions of Sailor Moon? Well, Sailor Moon is like when I think shoujo, it is the one. So I kind of had a rough idea what to go into, what what I was getting into. My first experience of Magical Girls, which I never thought was a sentence I'd say, was <laughs> actually Madoka. So this was surprisingly wholesome in comparison. I really liked it, actually. I didn't think I'd like it this much, given that I'm completely not at all the target audience. Like, at all. Being a guy quite a bit older and whatnot. But it was good. It was good. I enjoyed it. And I liked the general kind of positivity this is not the kind of thing you'll read and come out feeling like wow I feel terrible unlike a certain (laughs) manga that's coming up Uh (laughs) soonish so uh, yeah I enjoyed it yeah Um, I definitely didn't expect the plot to be more complex than the first chapter was alluding to yeah so my first impression was that um was very very shoujo with the art style a lot of these um uh pretty flower backgrounds and I loved it um it really even though I wasn't an avid like manga reader back in when I was like a a kid in the early 20s uh 2000s sorry um and it it still felt nostalgic because the technology in in there and the art style yeah, and just really, 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 really nice. It just it, it's, it's sort of like a snapshot of that era, which is really cool mm-hmm. to see. So it was really, really cute and wholesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think definitely we'll touch on this more later, but the art style definitely brings you back to when a lot of manga was drawn that way. But uh, yeah, for my first impression, I think I actually started with the anime, um not the more recent one but when I was in sixth form I would spend my free periods watching Sailor Moon the anime and upon reading the manga now it's so different because I think the anime was more of a monster of the week kind of deal Mm. and this was more it kind of got straight to the point it felt like but yeah for the manga I thought it was I was able to relate to it, which I think is a strength of Sailor Moon, because I think a lot of the qualities and uh, even weaknesses that some of the um, people have in this world, you can relate to it. I think that's what resonates with a lot of people, um, especially children, when they read this uh, manga. Uh, And also Usagi reminds me of myself when I was a high school student, because Uh I would play (laughs) video games and watch anime instead of doing work. Uh, we have the same attitude towards work. Not for which... the not for the same reasons, but I will admit when I was reading this, I was like, wow, this is is this Jade when she was 14? <laughs> <laughs> it was. Yeah. I've I've actually found that um I found it hard to shake off the uh attitude over the years towards work. But yeah, I I really enjoyed reading the manga version of Sailor Moon. So Going straight into the plot, so far we've seen um, uh, Luna, who is a talking cat-shaped creature from Mm. the moon, who wakes up Usagi from her slumber. Mm. Uh, I don't know if you guys would freak out if you just woke up and saw a talking (laughs) cat on your windowsill. (laughs) (laughs) My own sanity. (laughs) But I love how like um, Usagi was just like, Okay, and then she just rolled over and went back to sleep at first. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, and Luna explains to Usagi that uh, she is Sailor Moon and she needs to lead these other Sailor soldiers um, on a quest to find the Silver Crystal, protect the Moon Princess and so on. And we eventually meet the other Sailor soldiers who are Sailor Mercury, uh, also known as Ami, uh, Sailor Mars, who is Ray, Sailor Jupiter, who is Makoto, and um, Sailor Venus, Sailor <laughs> Venus, <laughs> yeah, uh, who is, I've forgotten the name. Minako Aino? Yes, Minako Aino. I'd like to jump in actually quickly, as mm-hmm. I noticed this doesn't really translate through to English, but in Japanese, they all have at least. I think they all have a character 
that represents the sailor that they're part of. So Sailor Moon is Usagi Tsukino, and uh, Tsuki is Moon in Japanese. Similarly, Sailor Mercury, who is Ami Mizuno, Mizu is water for, for Mercury. Uh, you know, you've got Sailor Mars, who's Re Hino, and uh, He is kind of fire, which I thought was a pretty cool touch. That's yeah. so cool. And also, um, there's uh, Japanese lessons coming in handy now. <laughs> <laughs> I think there was that one instance in the manga where a pun got made when they went to the moon. They love their puns. Spoiler, but yeah, it, I think it was like on. Um, it was about Usagi's name. Yeah, because Usa- Usagi, uh, so Tsuki no Usagi, can be split into Tsuki no Usagi or Moon's Rabbit, and so mm. they're like, "Hey, you're finally now a rabbit on the moon." <laughs> I just love that they that she just throws these little touches in there. Um, yeah, and we also see Tuxedo Mask coming in and like going out. And uh, what was that meme up. of him? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my job here is done. <laughs> Uh, I, I, yeah. I actually screenshot a bit which I found it so funny when they're like after the umbrella where like he saved her right and then he's like thank you for saving my life and just the next panel just him running away <laughs> <laughs> oh, love that um, yeah he just co- he just arrives in like the middle of a fight and then he just watches from afar like seeing them get destroyed but like sometimes not being able to do anything and then the fight's over and he's like I must I must go um <laughs> but yeah so we have uh that guy we also have uh Queen Beryl uh mm-hmm. who is like a kind of uh leader well leader kind of of the kind of dark kingdom I think it was along with the four um generals I believe who are sent to like try and find the silver crystal all over the earth so we've got a sizable cast of characters um and it's basically just this quest for this uh for these chapters so what did you guys think of the plot I yeah like I said um I found it surprisingly um intricate because I didn't know anything about it I had one or two spoilers there about reincarnation and stuff but that's about it um but the more I read um the more intrigued I got because I thought it's just going to be like the anime that you described it's like a monster of a week they just keep fighting slowly they'll find out bits and pieces but like it seems like every chapter is like a new truth like new guardian like it's quite fast paced in that sense um, which is nice because like um, you know it's when it gets to the sort of peak of the story you're like oh I want to know like you know who's going to win like or will they ever get their memory back and they like instantly did which was really cool and yeah I really liked it um, I'm actually it got me even more curious as to like what will happen next because this is like she could have the, the mangaka could have easily stretched this over like more like chapters um I guess I like that the fact that it wrapped up um pretty qu- quickly um you know uh protect like them regaining their memories and such I just wonder what they're going to do as like daily high schoolers <laughs> just <laughs> chilling in their like 15 year old bodies and like we're gonna go learn maths <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know they're trying to at the same time trying to revive the moon um kingdom right yeah it, it took me by surprise how much sort of like this is like whole world there's like the moon and the earth that uh, the moon is like looking after um the earth essentially mm-hmm. um and apparently the sun is the father right and it somehow got moody and it just like spouted darkness <laughs> onto the earth <laughs> i want to know more about that that was just funny <laughs> even though it was very serious of course you know it caused a lot of tragedy where like I, yeah um that caused the lovers to to die that usagi or princess serenity had to commit suicide <laughs> Um, I didn't expect it to be that dark. I was like, whoa, she just like <laughs> shoved a sword in herself <laughs> and she had to do it again as Usagi. Um, 
yeah, that, that I didn't expect. Um, yeah, but I appreciated um, having more in-depth plot and it was really good. I can see why, like, you know, it was a bit off among the series. I think when I was like, when I'm, if I were younger, I think I would like, I, I would be like, all those like cute romantic moments, I would be like, oh my God. <laughs> They love each other. <laughs> ah! Adorable. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to piggyback on you talking about kind of being thankful that the plot moves on quickly. Mm. Because in the first three chapters, to be honest, I got a little annoyed that it didn't quite seem to make sense what was happening or why. So there's a moment when, for example, Sailor Mercury, I think, in uh, normal mode, so as Ami, wins a prize and gets like a couple of wands and then they turn out to be magical and I'm like wow why <laughs> you know is that normal what's going on <laughs> and I it was um a little I didn't find the first kind of three four chapters super engaging because of that I'm aware it was setting up plot and letting you kind of learn what the main characters are like mm -hmm. but given that we've now had you know a lot of magical girl shows and manga since you're aware, I get the concept, you know, so it was a little slow for me at first. But mm. as you said, the plot then moves very quickly. And I really appreciated that. I was dreading having, you know, chapters and chapters and chapters of Usagi and uh, Tuxedo Mask, like kind of meeting <laughs> and then kind of not meeting and both being like, man, I wonder if the other one will come and see me. Um, and it didn't take too long. It didn't take too long at all, yeah. which I really appreciated. And it meant that it wasn't kind of wasting my time. I was a little worried also because it was one of the the ones that got serialized into an anime. And I know, for example, Naruto had a similar kind of thing where character development would take so long to happen because of all the filler episodes. The manga wasn't too much like that, fortunately, either. But I don't know. I was a little worried it would. It didn't. So I'm pleased at the pace it took. And I ended up I ended up getting really involved, actually. I could not stop on chapter 13, which I think is a good <laughs> recommendation. Yeah. Yeah, because chapter 13 was like they they were in the middle of fighting or something. Yeah, why would you stop it there? She yeah. just, she's <laughs> like, I'm going to do my Omega attack, end chapter. It's like, well, no, wait, no. Because <laughs> I went on the internet and I was like, hmm, the name of this chapter, what was it? The reincarnation. I was like, oh, that sounds like a conclusion to something. And I was like, it's oh, not a great, conclusion. brilliant. Yeah, it was not. <laughs> um, that chapter <laughs> to the fight. Yeah. yeah I I have to agree with you I think uh, I definitely understood the setup in the first uh, two or three chapters but I I also really liked that they um, had a good pacing for the rest of the chapters that we read and I like that um, they encourage good life practices along the way uh, they're sort of scattered around the plot for example um, when Ami's weird crystal study group was brainwashing the students but Ami wasn't properly brainwashed and the teacher goes I know why you haven't been brainwashed you're slacking off you haven't studied properly and Ami just goes I'm not a slacker but studying is something you must do by your own initiative you can't force someone to do it like this um, and like I like that there are these catchphrases like I will not forgive you for messing with people's hopes and dreams um, mm -hmm. and like it really cements these ideas of your independence your uh, agency is your own you are your own person yeah at me. the target age for this I could definitely see people like at least what I imagine the target age is just like yelling this in the playground with their friends yeah <laughs> some good catchphrases actually oh yeah didn't the mangaka wrote this because she she was like she those those sailors were character like people she wished she would be friends with or something yeah like I read it somewhere oh um so in the plot we have characters uh what did what? you <laughs> <laughs> the characters in plot <laughs> wait a second I wasn't told of this. <laughs> <laughs> So allegedly in the <laughs> in the plot we allegedly have characters um which I am now claiming. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Um so uh what did you think of the characters and which character did you feel a connection towards? That's a good one. Um I most 
liked Sailor Mercury, which is funny, actually, because a while back you were like, I thought you were Sailor Mercury and got me the badge of it, which I really appreciated. I still have. Uh, so thank you again. I liked her the most, most, most just bleh, bleh, mostly because she was kind of calm. She was the collected one. I felt mm -hmm. Sailor Moon was a little too scattered for me to mm -hmm. fully relate. And then I, I'm not really an angry person. So Sailor Mars didn't didn't really work out. For Sailor Mercury, I was like, yes, I wish I had her grades, but I'll take the calmness. Mm -hmm. So for me, she was she was the one I kind of related to the most. Though I did actually like, I did really like kind of Sailor Moon's way of pushing the plot forwards and her total commitment to being a magical girl after after a couple of little hiccups at the start. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I would agree. Like, I feel I feel like I know about her the most out of all the other sailors. I w one thing I wish maybe I'll, I'll like they'll probably explore each of the. Um, sailor's character more but uh because i felt because the each chapters is like new guardian new guardian new guardian it's like you don't really have time to sort of get to know each of them that well you kind of get the just like once you know a little bit sundry <laughs> 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 or one's um super strong um but also susceptible to manipulation uh one's super smart and one is the leader of the group um but i just like to get to them uh get to know them more but i think mercury we spend the most time with because she's like the first um, i yeah i totally agree i think actually the amount of time that we spent was not quite enough to get to know many of the other characters well enough to form a proper mm -hmm. bond for me yeah. sailor moon yes the cats <laughs> yes mercury also yes but the others are cool, they're interesting, but I'd like to see how they bounce off each other and Sailor Moon some more. Mm. And I'd like to see them go through their own kind of trials and challenges and overcome yeah. them. Yeah, because it's, you can definitely distinguish them between Sailor Moon because when Sailor Moon was first, you know, when she first discovered her powers, she was just like, she was like, oh, she just focused on how am I gonna do this? And then she, instantly get distracted by like tuxedo ma mask and everything else <laughs> he's a and distracting the guy the yeah <laughs> i know right <laughs> he just shows up all the time uh and then like but the rest of the like mercury and um uh jupiter etc they all were like asking questions after like well why do i have these powers like oh who are we defeating who are these guys what are we protecting like they actually are trying to make sense of the situation whereas sailor moon is just like Oh well, <laughs> continue my life as a high yeah. uh, Oh no, this is trouble. I guess I'll transform. Question mark. Oh no, I'm gonna cry. But then Luna is gonna like, don't cry. No, you're gonna set off a po pulse. Um, use your freaking um, tiara, and she's like, oh right, I have a tiara. <laughs> it's like, I just love that. That is so her. Um, I appreciate that's her character, but I I like the contrast. <laughs> <laughs> she gives me an impression of the kind of thing where you're on the train and you're like frantically laying the tracks down as you go <laughs> yeah yeah basically. I feel like that's how she approaches life yeah oh doesn't care uh, she's like, yeah. oh, cute guy and then she just runs off <laughs> yeah I think for me the character that I feel a connection towards the most would obviously be Jadeite. Who uh -huh, else? Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> when, right. when they were talking all about Jade, I was like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, I think for me, Usagi is the one that I feel most connected to in the way that, you know, as I was describing before, her work ethic, her kind of, um, the time that she spends gaming and sleeping is something that I very much relate to. So it's like for me. I was gonna say I really like the plot twist of when you know you thought that Sailor V was the actual Moon Princess, and then it turns out it was Sailor Moon. I was like, oh, I didn't see that coming. <laughs> me neither, actually. I like that too. Yeah. I also it's... appreciated uh Tuxedo Mask, who I keep wanting to call Mask Tuxedo, which is not his name, <laughs> getting kind of kidnapped. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So Sailor Moon is not the only one he needed saving. Mm -hmm. mm. 
exactly. I had a lot of questions crop up whilst I was reading Sailor Moon. And um, one of them is, so we have all these sailor planets. Who is Sailor Earth? <laughs> and then I realised it's Tuxedo Mask. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's mind-blowing. <laughs> that, that's not the... Uh... The questions I was having coming up were like, how do I become a magical girl? <laughs> Am I too old now? <laughs> Is it too late? <laughs> <laughs> Is it too late? Frantic yeah. Googling. You just need a magical cat and it will like reawaken your memories. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Will a regular cat do? If you can like... find one with a crescent shaped mark on its mm. head. A ball spot. <laughs> I'll see what I can do. <laughs> oh. Do you think, though, if Luna and Artemis took on the form of other entities, like they weren't cats, would the tone of the series change, do you reckon? What do you reckon? Imagine if like a great fucking bear came through your window (laughs) saying, (laughs) you must come with me. (laughs) Come with me if you want to live. (laughs) That's That's a good question, actually. I think they work well as cats. They could be like generic cat-like entities like a certain Cube from another magical girl mm. series that i'll mm. try not to mention too many times and that would i think so, do the same thing if they were bear uh <laughs> maybe not <laughs> i was thinking more like a giraffe because it's like the window oh yeah you just yeah. get the head coming in like hey do you want to be a magical girl <laughs> <laughs> And then when they go to the moon, it'll just be their neck extending out. <laughs> <laughs> they kind of climb. Hey, kid, I want to get down to Earth. Just slide down my neck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what the hell? <laughs> um, in the the Fate series, actually, have um, like an offshoot called Carnival Phantasm, which combines the Fate series and a couple of other ones, and they have the characters. It's like a comedy show where the Fate series would normally be more serious. This Carnival Phantasm spin-off is a spin-off and it's a comedy one. And I feel like if Sailor Moon were to have one like that, that would be definitely a sketch where <laughs> Luna is a giraffe and they have to like slide <laughs> along her neck just to get to the moon. That would absolutely be a thing. Um, I would pay to watch oh, that. It's <laughs> not take two. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they could be like QAing different animals for it. Yeah, bear. Just, we've got sorry. giraffe. We've got um, crocodile. squirrel, crocodile. <laughs> okay. yeah. Oh man! <clears throat> so Sailor Moon has some good art, in my opinion, uh, and it's got. I think like a lot of people on the internet have been praising it for its kind of uh, fashion, the colours, the toning of what, the... What colours? It's black and white. No, but in like the, the pictures, in the, oh, yeah. okay, you know, the okay. coloured bits. Mm-hmm. And what did you think of the art in Sailor Moon? Beautiful, as, as a shoujo manga should be. Flowery, big teary eyes, big shiny sparkly eyes you know at one point i think it was who's the other blonde one sailor venus in some shots if you don't know what was going on you could have thought that she was um sailor moon (laughs) i really got the two mixed up a lot i really struggled to tell the difference between sailor moon and sailor venus Mm. it's the buns that you know they've both got the fringe they've both got buns they're both blonde Mm. Actually, Sailor Moon, um, Sailor Moon's hair was supposed to be pink originally because mm-hmm. apparently oh. it was supposed to reflect like, so I think all their colours are reflective of like their elements or something, mm-hmm. but Sailor Moon, um, pink was supposed to be from the pink moonstone, which is like this kind mm-hmm. of really delicate light, light pink colour. But apparently the, I think it was the publishers or management made the mangaka change the hair color to blonde because it would like mark it better on the cover interesting i think blonde worked really well and it's definitely mm. with the kind of the red and the blue and the white mm. i think it works really well mm. yeah and the outfits are just beautiful i love the when um like before she transforms into her full sailor gear like there's like always an intermediate 
outfit right like at one point she changed it to a flight um uh attendant and i thought that line was really cute when because it was like they were chasing a bus and luna's like why a flight attendant apparently like because say the uh, was like because our mission is to ensure a safe and pleasant trip for all passengers <laughs> i was like that's so cute i love that but i thought the you know the dresses when they were at the ball that was really cute mm. um yeah just the fashion's amazing uh so i can see why Sailor Moon, you know, in its entirety, is still uh, anime uh, and manga classic. I agree. You, it was, um... it was very pretty. I think for a shoujo, it worked beautifully. It wasn't really my cup of tea, to be honest with you. It was a little too uh, flowery and whatnot, but I did enjoy it nonetheless. And there were a few really standout panels for me. One of my favorites actually was, I think, Sailor Moon had been like crying or something and she's like talking about her eyes and how they're all puffy and she's kind of pulling down on on one of them and so one of her eyes is like really shoujo like a third of her face sparkles everything and the other one's just like a normal eye <laughs> it's just cracked me up yeah. so I think I think it works really well the style is excellent and it just screams shoujo to me I'm just not the target audience, I think. Mm -hmm. So I liked yeah, it. No, just... <laughs> yeah, I get what you mean about it being very sort of uh, flowery. Yeah, I, I liked that eye scene as well. It's just like half her face. It's like, yeah. Ah. <laughs> um, I love how the mangaka makes all the girls look sophisticated yet playful. And, uh, you know, as 14 year old girls, you know, um, I think, you know, she's got it spot on like the way they dress the way they talk and stuff um is all reflected in the art quite well and i adore the fashion in this manga uh, and it's i think it's pretty cool that there's a variety of styles here for all the right moments um uh, panel wise you know when it's funny there's a comedic style you know eyes bulging limbs flailing but when you've got some loving going on it's all roses and blushing and curlier hair and the faces are so defined tuxedo mask <clears throat> uh i noticed that in <laughs> one panel like as you were saying before um so ellen about like the flowers like the just the background uh one of them was just penguins <laughs> <laughs> yeah I never know never saw that before either <laughs> but yeah it was like tiny print uh, a tiny penguin print as the background um and I also like that all the sailor outfits are different in their design but still very much part of a whole sort of collective group mm. uh, you know the sailor soldiers um with their own colors and their own hair accessories and styles and stuff which I thought you know worked really well and um uh yeah I also found it quite hard to distinguish between Sailor Moon and Sailor Venus at times but I think yeah upon careful uh consideration of like where the buns were and um <laughs> I think Sailor Venus has a hair bow or something yeah. as well so it, it did take me some time um but yeah overall I thought the art was amazing yeah um, I think I'd just like to echo your shout out to the outfits some of them were so good yeah i'm seeing a lot of like uh sailor moon fashion blogs <laughs> like recreating sailor moon fashion it's so Aww. cute yeah. um so one of the things that i wanted to touch on today was femininity in sailor moon so uh, i was reading a couple of articles online about you know what kind of impact has sailor moon had on um people around the world and um a lot of stuff came up like there's the uh there's strength in people's weaknesses in this manga uh there's allyship in women and having uplifting relationships um makeup sailor suit outfits uh jewelry and other accessories and um this one particular author, Magda Eric Susi, who wrote about the Western Sailor Moon generation, North American women and feminine friendly global manga in Dr. Casey Brienza's Global Manga, Japanese Comics Without Japan. They touch on uh, the female gaze in Sailor Moon. Um, and I just wanted to know what were your thoughts about femininity 
in Sailor Moon. I like that they were all like, um, I guess, given the the stories that they're, they're supposed to, it, it was literally the sailor's job to protect the princess. But I guess before that, it's like, even when they were before, they had their memories, um, when they uh, remember who they were in their past life. It was nice to see they were all quite like supportive of each other. And there was no like, fighting over guys like you will see in like other I guess shows although it is hinted at that Mercury and I want to say was it Jupiter the long ponytail that they're both like the arcade guy <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> that was cute uh hopefully there isn't much like um inviting with that but it's like I mean he's yeah. got a he's got an arcade what more is there to say <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, it's it's nice because they all sort of um, they no, never like look down on each other's hobbies. Even though like Sailor Moon is constantly like playing games, and when you have like the smart girl who's like when she introducing Ami to to the arcade, she wasn't like oh, I don't have time to play games. I must study. She was like, all right, I know how to. Oh, I sense all the patterns in a game playing pattern, and she ends up like beating her <laughs> or like in winning prize. Um, I don't know it, it's just nice like it, it kind of like maybe I'm reading too much into this it's just like you know people can exist without different with different hobbies and yeah it's it's nice that then um, I think yeah. for for my two cents I think it can do a lot also having these characters that are essentially role models so actually what arguably my most motivational character ever from like anything was uh my from my Hime. And her like positive attitude kind of got me through secondary school and stuck with me ever since. Mm -hmm. And I think that for many people, especially, you know, young girls growing up reading this and, and any boys that read it too, having somebody that's so that, you know, faces these trials and faces these issues, but stays positive in light of that is really motivational. And it's, it's an excellent thing to have. So I, yeah. I guess the reason that I'd link this to femininity is that say, let's say the moon, being a girl could be more relatable to young girls and make it a lot more easy for her to inspire people. Yeah, I definitely agree because um, uh, in the book, they also mentioned, you know, that Sailor Moon had a lot of empowering themes. And I was thinking, yeah, I do feel empowered. Like, you know, Good. I can... Moon prison power. <laughs> yeah. Moon prison power, make <laughs> up. Um, but... Yeah, I th also uh, was reading about some criticisms of Sailor Moon as well. Um, I think one criticism was that the so I think later in later chapters, there's someone who likes to dress in um, trousers more. Uh, mm -hmm. But when they mm -hmm. transform, they transform into a sailor suit uh, with the with mm -hmm. a skirt. So there was that. Uh, do you know what I mean? That like they'd like know, link that outfit to the kind of feeling of power and the fact that it didn't have like a trousers version meant that to have this kind of this is just just my guess that kind of mm. you know feminine power did not necessarily tie in with wearing trousers perhaps I think that's what they meant so I think I, I can understand um but yeah it, it was interesting reading these criticisms as well as the um praises for Sailor Moon Speaking of that, I found the initial stages of the, of the romance between Sailor Moon and Tuxedo Mask a little much, maybe. The mm -hmm. fact that I think I think they had a... I think he kissed her when she was unconscious, like really early on or something like that. And I was like... Yeah, I was like, I guess given it times that they thought... I think it's with not just like... Sailor Moon is like shoujo or even like other romance genre either books or like movies for a long time it's like thought it was romantic when a guy was like kissing a girl when she's like sleeping or like oh she likes uh, he likes her um, but you know it's meant to be dramatic irony the audience know but she doesn't know but you know in this day and age it's like mm. <laughs> yeah I mean if you're already dating great you know go for it but mm -hmm. considering they weren't and they hadn't been like I like you to each other either mm -hmm. I found it a little a little weird yeah but mm -hmm. not not weird enough to detract from from the rest of the story 
And then I suppose it makes more sense given that they had already been together in like the previous life yeah. and were, were clearly like both pretty into each other. Just, mm. I don't know, just the initial stages when neither of them knew that and he did that. I was like, mm, should you be doing this? Yeah. Mm. I, definitely. It's, it's a trope. I think, yeah, we, we, as a society, we're ready to move on from that trope. <laughs> yeah. yeah, cool. That was a great discussion. Um, and now we turn to a section that we have in our podcast where we bring a character from the previous manga that we read, which was uh, Yotsubato, into our current one, which is Sailor Moon. So let's say uh, we bring in Yotsuba into oh Sailor Moon. She's already a sailor. Oh, yeah, sailor, sailor Chibi Yotsuba. Moon. <laughs> I'm calling it. How do you think she'd fare? I mean, oh my God, she would be the best. She'd be fantastic. <laughs> Oh, she'll add more comedic moments because what we've read so far is quite plot heavy but she would definitely be more mm -hmm. um, bring more like fighting shenanigans and uh, like saying stuff like ah oh, yeah save your excuses for hell yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah she'd be excellent I could see her being the kind of you know she'd transform into a sailor but she'd be inexplicably way younger than the rest of them and yeah. so she, while she'd have like the best sense of justice, she'd get it a bit confused sometimes. So, for example, I could see a sketch where she like drops, you know, she sees like somebody accidentally bump somebody else and like make them drop their ice cream. And she just transforms there and then. And she's like, <laughs> wrong, you can't do that <laughs> kind of thing. And then the others have to explain to her like why that's not something that you should you should be uh, transforming and going all out for. What was that? Um that insect called like tsuki tsuki bushi or something oh yeah i in can't the name of tsuki tsuki bushi yeah <laughs> i will punish you she'd be she'd be excellent for it i think she'd work really well as the kind of the younger sailor that the others kind of mentor mm. but then she's kind of their grounding mm -hmm. where when they're like they're going to lose their way and then she's the one that kind of brings them back to uh -huh. you know on track of what's right yeah I can see her having three types of attack moves. One of them is pelting cicadas down from the sky. The other one is she whips out a water pistol and assassinates her enemy. And the third one is she just pulls that cute face when Asagi steals her strawberry. And then that's like completely just dead from that face. Kill him with cuteness. Yeah, that one. Amazing. My heart. <laughs> yeah, it's like you can't do this to somebody that young. <laughs> oh. uh, no, she'd work really, really well. What are your final thoughts? <laughs> Hang on. Okay, all right. Pause, pause. Keep that. Keep that. <laughs> <laughs> you went so robotic there. <laughs> what are your final thoughts? <laughs> 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 I'm coming back to a space of calm and tranquility. Serenity. So, <laughs> serenity. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, what are your final thoughts on Sailor Moon? Great. No. Um, <laughs> yes. Uh, I loved it. Um, the art is beautiful. Um, love the girls I want to know them a bit more so I would you know definitely when I have time <clears throat> continue reading and I would recommend it to anyone just want some sort of um light uh, like wholesome uh action magical uh romance manga um yeah although not for everyone maybe some might find it a bit slow or a bit tip um a bit confusing at times especially at the beginning but I assure you you know if you can overlook that and just get through the first few chapters you might find yourself surprisingly um amused for me I enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I would when we were planning this out I was like oh shoujo uh <laughs> you know not my not my genre <laughs> but I ended up enjoying it quite a lot actually especially once the plot got going and because the 
things that were initially kind of inexplicable that happened did have an explanation behind them and they did make sense. And while the plot went in 13 episodes from I'm a regular schoolgirl that's late to like save the planet, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was it was a quick progression. It didn't get boring at any point. So, you know, I, if, if you're like me and you normally would not read something like this at all, I would actually give it a recommend if you want something a little different. Um, it is mm. the definitive shoujo manga and it is with good reason. It is excellent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I completely agree with everything that you guys have just said. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. And I would half recommend the anime because I like the music and I like the uh, animation. It's just the plot can be a bit slow with lots of fillers, monster of the week, mm. that kind of thing. But the manga, perfect. Nice. Um, but yeah. So next episode, we're staying in the realm of magic. What are we reading next episode? Surprise, surprise. We're going back to Witch Hat Atelier, the first manga that we officially oh. read on this channel. We are picking up from um, where we left off. So continue in from 20, chapter 24 till chapter 40. Nice. This is good because I just so happened to have bought all of the available volumes. It was my it was my favorite manga that we read in season one. Yee. So I had to get it. I had to get it. Yee. I look forward to it. I'm excited to read it. Um, I can't wait to see what happens to Coco and Co. And Co. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um, thank you for listening to this episode of Ochato. We're the guardians of love and justice. We're the pretty sailor suited soldiers. In the name of the moon, we'll punish you. See you next time. <laughs> nice. <laughs>